What's this, episode 19 now? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we almost so. at 19. 20. We almost at 20, bro. Let's go. I'm right there. This is episode 19 of the Rhythm and Rhymes podcast. I'm your host, AJ Hughes, and I'm here with my co-host. He's back, Antonio. How was Lala Pooza? I feel like it's been a while. I don't know. Uh, Lala was good, actually. Honestly, I almost forgot about it. Just started packing this stuff for school, but... um. Lala was real good. I mean, Kendrick's performance was crazy. That was probably my highlight of the weekend, just because I've always wanted to see Kendrick. And um, Key Glock was probably another one I really liked. Rema was really good. Like, Rema's stage presence was good for being a smaller artist on a bigger festival. Like, he was kind of middle of the day, and um, I felt like he had the crowd really with him the whole time, and I really appreciated his. And then Thames was real good, too. Um, she started with Hire, obviously, but um, her performance was really good, too. She played a lot of stuff that I liked. And, yeah, it was, it was, it was a good weekend, though. I really enjoyed it, to be honest. Man, last week I was talking about albums I'm most looking forward to for the rest of the year, and Thames is probably up there. She was at the end of last year. She was talking about how she was working on her next project, and then she just kind of went ghost. Like there's been no features, there's been no singles, there's been nothing. And you just see her pop up at festivals and stuff like that. Yeah, I, honestly, it was kind of weird because like I, I didn't think there was going to be that many people at her set just because she only has like a small select amount of music right now. Obviously she's gotten pretty famous and pretty like, um, pretty like out of here as far as like features and stuff like that. But still, I don't feel like she's the most known as far as her own songs. Like I feel like she's known for a lot of her features and stuff. So uh, yeah, I mean, I think her album's going to be great though. Yeah. I mean, she had like a, like a smash, a real smash with essence. And then you working with Drake, and then you get the sample and stuff like that. So I feel like the Drake Association. It's like once Drake like puts his name on something, it's like this is out of here. So I'm not really surprised by it. Yeah, yeah, that Drake stamp is still really, yeah, yeah. Sorry. But there, there was a lot of music that came out this weekend. Honestly, we're not gonna get to all of it. I'm not gonna get to uh, Fredo. I want to listen to that this week in. In London, you know, I'm going across the pond, going to see the Mando. Yes, so I'm not, I, I gave it a brief listen, but I don't really want to talk about it this week. I want to talk about it next week. But I wanted to start with TDE. The question I've been wondering for, it hasn't just been with Reason dropping. It's been for the last couple of years, honestly. Like, is TDE a prehistoric label? Is TDE a thing of the past? Is TDE going to be successful in this new internet age? You know? Reason just dropped his album, Porches, and there was a bunch of controversy around it because of um, he went on a show. It was called Figmunity, I think it was called. Mm-hmm. Um, you said you watched the whole interview. I did not. I'm, I'm the clip, clip king. You know, I'm just going to watch the clip, comment, and keep it moving. What did you learn from this interview prior to the album? Before we get into the album, what did the interview say about what was coming for the album, honestly? Uh, I mean... I feel like Reason really talked about having a lot of his old music on there. Like, I feel like it was a mix of old and new stuff. Obviously, he had features with Dochi and Ray Vaughn, so those are probably more new reworked records. But he definitely had talked about a lot of the songs had, um, like, been songs he had been working on. They had been stuff that he had wanted to put out and didn't get to put out. But something that he really said in there that I think would really go with this topic is, like, he was saying, oh, like, sometimes I don't, I wake up and I don't feel like doing what it takes to be, like, popping in this day and age and stuff like that. And I think that's what really is stopping TDE for real. Like, I feel like they, they're not a thing of the past, but their business model or the way they go about putting out projects is a thing of the past. Like, you can't sit here and take four, three, four years between drops and, like, it's it's just different with how the internet is right now. Everything is so fast paced. Everything is so like next album, next album that it's like you you kind of have to be able to keep up. And that was one thing he was really stressing is that he was trying to like do features with certain people or he was trying to um like j- just work with certain artists and stuff like that. But when he would p- approach the label with it, approach whoever, like Punch Top, whatever, he would... um just get like the pushback and they wouldn't want to do it and i feel like listening to this album i can see why you would sit here and be like 
I don't want to sit here and put all this money into something that's not really like, I don't feel like this is his, like, I feel like this is a kind of a flop of an album. I didn't really like it. I thought it was decent. There were some good verses on it, but you know what I mean? Like, I think, I think you yeah. made some good points there. I think, um, I think the, the thing that it's so weird to look at what their label was and what it is today now. I put here the names that are still on the label. You have Absol, Isaiah Rashad, Lance uh, Ski- Skywalker, Reason, Sir, Zakari, Dochi, J Rock, Rayvon, Schoolboy Q, SZA. And so I like, in terms of the new school, I would take Schoolboy Q off. I take J Rock off. I take uh, Absol off. And I would even take Sir off. You know, I think Sir and SZA, obviously, but I would take them off of this new school is because sir got in right at the end i feel like and i feel like what set a lot of these older artists apart in even in that time that they were the most popular is they were they're like aliens like you heard of black hippie right black hippie the group that they had that never really released a project it's so interesting because all four of them were just so different and they were so unique and so one of one and I think that's where Top Dog in in the past had really found success. They found these one of one aliens that could really just rap. And you and during that time, it wasn't the social media like like got to keep up, got to keep up. Whereas you got to be out there in front of everybody, invisible all the time. So if you come out every three or four years with some heat, then I can understand why they go about that business model because it is a form of art artist development, right? Like just making them do more reps, do more songs, do more takes. It's going to make them better as an artist, but sometimes you do need feedback. I think early in a career, you need more feedback than you do later in a career, right? Like SZA can go four or five years in between albums because she delivered already and she has an idea what people want. But if you're just starting out, it can't be that you sort of have to, I, and I think, re, uh, not Reason, uh, Russ is the best example of that early on. It's like, I got to put out a ton of product on the front end just to see what people like. And then I can sort of take my time on the back end. So when you look at the new school or like the new people that they have, Isaiah Rashad, to me, he's an alien. An alien, I just mean you can't really compare him to somebody. That That's what I use as the definition for that. But Isaiah Rashad, you can't really compare, it to, compare him to anybody. Lance Skiwalker and Zakari. To me, those two are just, they're weird because to me, they don't feel like solo acts. To me, they feel like like when they need a hook or when they need some instrumentation, they just kind of go lean on these two. They don't put out their own music for like Zakari put out a little EP, Lance Skiwalker put out an EP this year, but like they're so quiet that they don't feel like solo acts in the rap category to me. They're not really the rappers that TDE traditionally has. Dochi, she had a lot of online presence before she got signed. Like she was a YouTube personality, like an influencer before she got popping. Like you can go back and find videos when she's like, yo guys, I just quit my job at Chipotle or I'm just doing this, this and that. Like she had an online presence prior to getting popping online. And so she sort of fits that quote unquote alien category for me too, because she's just a personality. And then Ray Vaughn, Ray Vaughn's still really early. He put out the little EP, but I think Ray Vaughn has some of those intangibles that he's just that talented of a lyricist that it makes sense. Reason, when I when I saw the clip of them calling him like a gym teacher or whatever, I was like, I was like, yo, one, that's petty to hear from your label. But two, it's like in reality, who is Reason outside of the bars? Like like, who is he? And I think that plays into the part of, like, listening to him rap. Like, he can clearly rap, but me listening to this project, I just don't believe him. I don't know what it is. I just don't believe him. And it makes me not want to really go back to the project. And it's not like I don't think he's talented or he's good at what he does. I just think there's no personality to back it up. And part of that is the way that TDD goes about their business. So I think it's part partially him because he doesn't have that much of a online personality or presence or a medium to show his personality through that's not music and the fact that tde is sort of restrictive in how they go about releasing artist music um yeah i feel like he he just didn't really show like the type of like 
grit and grind it really takes to be in a faster paced industry. I feel like like somebody like you said, Russ, I would even say somebody like La Russell too. Yeah, I think, I guess maybe the question, let me ask you this then. Okay. Is TDE, I don't want to say are they a thing of the past. I think are they, is the model that they run not good for artist development of new acts in today's era? I think like you get a finished product and you go to a TDE, they're going to help you put out a good body of work. But I think in the beginning, like they just don't have, they're just not the social media, internet media savvy to get an artist some sort of fan base initially. You know what I mean? So maybe is that is that the question? Like, do they not need to be in the early artist development stage anymore? Is that just not for them? I just think that the way that they go about their early artist development just isn't, it doesn't fit with what today is. You know what I mean? I feel like that's what I'd say about it. Like, okay. I, I, that's kind of what I started with too. Like, yeah. I just feel like their business model, the way they go about just taking a bunch of time between even releasing content with artists, um, doesn't really work for how fast everything is at this point. we'll see i mean we'll see what ends up happening with them i think uh it this was definitely interesting to see on the timeline for sure like i kept seeing people saying that uh that dreamville did more for reason than top dog did and that, that was really funny <laughs> because he was on every revenge of the dreamers let's get into the second album that this was the album i was most excited for this weekend uncle waffles really solace um, this was a 42 minute on my piano album. If you don't know who Uncle Waffles is, she's an on my piano DJ from South Africa. And I think that I think that this project was definitely a step up from the last project. On my piano was something that's definitely not a hard sell, but if you haven't gotten into house music prior or into on my piano prior, there is like a little like not a barrier to entry, but it's like, you have to really give it a chance. And I love this project. I've been bumping it all week and I wanted to use it to talk about like the music industry's live music problem or live concert problem, right? We've talked about on here prior, how much the, how prices of tickets are increasing, how prices of touring is increasing and how this sort of plays into how labels think they can't break a star today and they're having trouble with that. And when I watch like uncle waffles online and I go watch, like if you've seen one of her sets online, it's very interesting the way that she has that crowd control. You know what I mean? Like watching her behind the turntables and then get out in front of the turntables and do like a whole dance set. Like she has like this interesting crowd control that I feel like, I guess hip hop and rap doesn't really have today. You know what I mean? And I think um, part of the problem with the live industry is because it costs so much, like you can't really get to see all the artists you want to see if they're all going on tour, just because unless they're at a festival. And so I think the DJ or the producer DJ provides like a real opportunity to sort of introduce new artists to new audiences, but also like, create events that people will pay for this is still really early but i think over the next five to ten we're gonna see more djs like really corner markets and take over and i think uncle waffles has that opportunity i think once we start seeing more rappers on on my piano beats like not afro beats artists because that's already happening but once we see more rappers on on my piano beats i think that this whole new lane for like live events is going to take off take off yeah you know what's crazy about that i when i was in lala i felt like everywhere i turned there was a different dj a different producer or just somebody on stage that wasn't a traditional like just artist who wasn't sitting there rapping or singing or something like that and i felt like last year i kind of noticed like kind of a shift with it but this year i feel like it's like Oh, it was like a really big thing. And I was thinking the same thing that producers and DJs are really going to be like a really big thing for the next couple of years. Cause if you see how, how much support that they were getting versus like the rap sets, I mean, obviously Key got Kendrick, they had a lot of people there, but like the smaller rappers versus like the smaller EDM artists that you hadn't really heard before. I feel like 
they had a lot of like people at their sets. And I do feel like even the breaking artist, because there was a song that he did with an artist I hadn't even heard of. And, um, he had produced Who? in the background, uh, this guy named, this guy named Fred again. Sorry. Oh, um, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Fred. That, that's so crazy that you said that. Keep going, but I'll say it. Yeah. But I, I hadn't heard of him until the, um, until that concert and he had played a bunch of stuff. He did like a, he had did a little baby remix. He had a future remix and um, he had introduced this new artist to me that I hadn't heard before. And they dropped a song actually Friday that I really messed with. But Who? Do you Freddy. remember the artist's name? I'm, no, um, the artist I couldn't name. pronounce. Yeah, I couldn't pronounce the name. Yeah. I um, um, Adore You, Fred again. Uh, yeah, I don't know who that yeah. is. Yeah, I think he's from the he he sounded like he was British, so I think he I think he was from the UK. But yeah, um I just uh you know FKA Twigs. Yeah. Yeah, he she has a song with and this is such a weird combo, but it was FKA Twigs, Hetty One, and Fred again. And I just found that song yesterday on a random. It was so fire. But um yeah, I just think I think that rap I don't know. I feel like music, everything's on a pendulum, right? Everything swings too far one way and then too far the other way, too far one way. And I think, you know, before rap, we had funk, we had soul. Like It was a lot more dance, a lot of house music then, too. And I think rap became the most dominant genre, and it just sort of swung back in the other direction, where it's like, now you on stage, and it's like, think about, did you see the 50 Cent concert at all, like, in Brooklyn, when he was bringing all those people out? No. He brought out, bro. He brought out so many people. He brought out Pitbull. He brought out J Cole. He brought out a Boogie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He I heard about all him. these people, and it was lit. But like, if you think about a rap show, like, have you seen the the memes of like, yo, know, people at rap shows just like, <laughs> yeah. like, that's, and that's what it is. And that's, and I, I remember a couple years ago when I got into Ketranada, I was like, oh, this is the solution for rap. You know what I mean? Like people. Getting people to the live events and getting them excited at the live events is so hard. And DJs have more of a pulse on what makes people move than anybody because they're just playing records that they're and they're looking at the crowd's reactions. So the producer DJs, I think, are going to run the next couple of years. And so I just wanted to give a couple of them that I think people should look into to sort of give an example of what I'm talking about. Because I think in hip hop, I don't want to say we have bad examples of this now, but we don't have examples that are serving that purpose like getting people to dance and move again like dj khaled isn't doing that uh dj drama isn't doing that they do their own thing and they're all right but i want to say if you're looking for art uh producer djs that are in this vein that we're talking about i would say start with k Trinata. and then i would say look at dj spinal i would also say look at uncle waffles hers is a little different because she's doing on my piano but i think i just there's something about on my piano, bro, where I just think it's going to be, it's not going to be a wave. Like it's going to be a mainstay in music just because of the, the sonics. Um, but I'll just start with those three: K. Trinata, DJ Spinal, and then uh, Uncle Waffles. But I'm excited about it. I think uh, going back and listening to old Afrobeat and then listening to house music today, it's like I understand it. It's more like a vibe, bro. You just throw it on in the back, like while you cleaning a house, you cooking or whatever. Like the songs be seven, eight, nine minutes. So it's not something that you just like play that you play and it's going to be hook, uh, hook, verse, hook, verse, and it's over. It's just a vibe. So if you can get behind that, I would definitely go check those out. Um, What else I got on here? There was a lot of other music that dropped. What else? What else dropped this weekend that you were listening to? Anything? Uh, Carol G dropped her deluxe. That was pretty, yeah. pretty good. I was kind of mad. I didn't, I didn't get to see her at Lala because we went to Diplo actually, which was funny. Oh, she was that. She was at Lala. DJ. Yeah, she was a headliner on Thursday, and um, I heard her from the other side, and I was sitting there kind of sick because one of my friends had went with a girl he had met, and I didn't want to lose my the like my two other friends so i was like i'm not gonna just leave and be by myself and yeah so i missed it i, I heard her playing the, the song i wanted to hear too i was so mad about it she's so fire bro i started really yeah. digging back in her catalog a couple of days ago 
Um, I enjoy I enjoyed the uh, the deluxe though. Did you hear the Caliucci's record? Did you hear the Caliucci's record that she dropped last week? I talked about it, but I don't no. know if you heard it. Yo, I didn't hear it. No. Yo, that shit is nuts. That shit is actually nuts. Um, but Caliucci's was on the deluxe, and mm-hmm. I'm just gonna use this as a mini transition, just because Cali Caliucci says she's in her next era. This is her Spanish bag. You know what I'm saying? I told you how she's switching off back and forth. That song last week, it had JT and El Alpha on it, the uh the Dominican artist. That yeah. shit was a that shit was a bop, bro. That shit I, I like that song a lot. Yeah, I gotta go listen to that then. I actually like El Alpha a lot. Yeah. Anything else anything else you heard this weekend outside of Carol Jean? Or that was pretty much uh, it, just that reason. I mean, Trippy Red, but I didn't really get much into that. I heard like two, three songs off that. I didn't really wanna get into the sad bag, so I left it alone. Yeah, I listened to a song off of there because who who was on the album? Where I was like, this is, looks like interesting, an interesting collaboration, and I went to go listen to one song. It was uh, who was it? Oh, he had Tommy Lee Sparta on the uh, on the album, and I was like, this is kind of crazy. Tommy Lee Sparta is uh, he's a Jamaican, uh, he's like dancehall esque, hmm. but he was in Portmore Empire, which was uh vibes cartels that was his that was his group when he was out oh, it was wow. him popcon and tommy lee sparta and i was like this is such a crazy name for trippy red to have on the album the song wasn't good but i was like i get it check it. i'll listen to it. I don't know. um mm-hmm. but also this weekend what i listen to i'll go through the singles and then i'll get into olamide um stefan don and benson dropped a single called what's popping um it's like it's almost like an R and B song. Benson had a lot of songs come out this last week, and I'm excited because his album is about to drop pretty soon. Um, but this record is honestly the first record from Stefan Don in the last couple months that I've really liked. You know, I've been a fan of Stefan Don for a while now, and I just feel like I don't want to say she has the same problem as, but I think a lot of female rappers, and maybe this is just me being a man, like you know, they do the they do the pussy rap, bro. They just do the pussy rap. And I'm just like, you can't. I can't sit here and bop this all day. Like, you got to give me some something else. You got to give me something else for me to be a fan. And this was that. You know, I'm excited. Stefan Don's supposed to drop a project soon. She been. She said she had a project like eight or nine months ago. So we'll see when she plans on dropping that. But that was a good single that came out. Um, Black Sheriff dropped a two pack called "Take Care of Yourself, Blacko." Um, they were all right. I think he's so early in his career. I think he's still 20 or 21. And so a lot of the songs he's putting out now feel experimental and I'm fine with that. You know, I think he has a dope voice. Like, you know, when you hear somebody sing over tracks and then you go hear him live and it's like, bro, this man can't sing. It was all auto tune. Yeah. It wasn't that for Black Sheriff. I saw him at Afro Nation and his voice is actually really nice. And I can, and whenever I see somebody like playing around like this, throwing out singles, I think a uh, um, Burner Boy said that his grandfather told him one time that your voice is like an instrument. And I think about that a lot. But listening to these songs, like you hear him going in and out of different melodies and like different pockets, you're like, oh, he's just trying to figure it out right now. But I did like the second song on there. It was um, Simmer Down. I like that one a lot. So uh, if you're in the Black Sheriff, definitely go check that one out. Uh, he's from Ghana. He's really dope. And the last project I wanted to talk about this week was Olamide Unruly. The way this has been described to me, um, the Afrobeat scene over the last five or six years, right? Like we look at the big three now as uh, Wizkid, Davido, and Burna Boy, but Burna Boy to Africans wasn't in that. Burna Boy wasn't in the big three up until recently. It was Olamide. And Olamide is in front of, uh, he's in charge of YNBL or, is it YNBL or YBNL? I think it's YBNL. But that's where Fireboy DML and Asha K are signed. They're signed to Olamide. And uh, Olamide is signed to Empire. So it's like, a little conglomerate. And it's been interesting to sort of see him pop in and out of the music scene as these two have been becoming more stars. Like Fireboy DML has been having a good 2023. 
Asha K has been having a good 2022 and 2023. So I was interested to see how this project was going to go for him. And honestly, I really liked it compared to those other three artists or other four artists that I name. Olamide is like a rapper, rapper. He's a rapper's rapper. You know what I mean? And so it was interesting for me to actually listen to this project compared to the other Afrobeats project I've listened to over the last year or two. I think uh, Black Bones is the closest rapper from Nigeria that I listened to that I really like. So this was just definitely a different type of vibe for me. Um, he had a bunch of different features on here. He had he had CK, he had Benson, Asha K, Fireboy DML, Rema. Um, I would say my favorite song on this project is Come Alive with Benson. I'm just a really big Benson fan, and I think Benson smoked his verse. Uh, Rema's verse was really dope, too. So if you like Rema, I would go check that song out. That one's called uh, Mukulu. Um, but if you're looking for a different type of rap, it's not all English. I think I don't know what language he's speaking in. I don't want to get I don't want to jump out on the, uh, the legend guest, but it's not all English. Some of it is. But if you're looking for a different type of rap, go check out uh, Unruly by Olamide. Yeah, this definitely looks interesting. I mean, even the cover. I'm a big cover guy. I feel like I get, if your cover draws me in, I'm going to want to go listen to your songs. See what it's about at least. Do you have a song for us this week? What has been your most listened to song? What do you want to share with the people? Um, Well, I mean, I talked about the Carol G album and she... Uh, the song that I liked off there was Okie Dokie. It was the second song on the deluxe. And I would say go listen to that. I really appreciated that song this week. It was from heavy in my rotation. Song I got for y'all this week. Uh, it's an artist out of the DMV. Her name is Simi Liadi. Um, she's a friend of Joyce Sumaru, one of my favorite singers. Um, she hasn't really put out music recently. But Simi Liadi did. The song is called MSB. Um, I definitely like this song. I'll give y'all another one too, because uh, Luciano, he is a German drill rapper, odd enough, and he has a song that I really love with um, Bia, and they just released another one called Mama, and that's a crazy bop. So if you're looking for some drill music, go listen to Mama by Luciano and um, Bia. You hey, you about to be a Florida boy soon, bro? Are you ready? Are you ready to be down here with me? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm kind of sad to be packing everything up, but yeah, I'm definitely ready to leave. I guess it's yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, I don't really feel great today, but well, we'll get back to y'all next week. You know what I'm saying? I'll be in London with the Mandem next week. I don't know how we're recording. How I'm recording? We'll have something out for y'all for the show. But um, this is a shorter episode this week. You know, we just hard hitting topics, you know, real music journalism. Where else? Where else you going to get it? Um, We'll definitely see you all next week, though. Peace.